how porn use escalates and how relapse happens. Welcome back for another awesome episode of Porn Brain Rewire with me, Dr. Trish Lee, uh, your hostess with the mostest. So in this episode, I want to talk about the slippery slope of porn use. And this is a good episode because if you started watching porn when you were young in adolescence and you have escalated in your porn use or other sexual acting out behaviors, that is because of the brain mechanisms behind porn and hypersexuality. I want to break that down today. So, and secondarily, if you have recovered from porn use and you've put some of the pieces of the puzzle together, but perhaps not all of them, and you have had a slip or a relapse, this isn't something that has quote unquote just happened. Again, there's brain mechanisms at play that lead to relapse, and it has to do with hypersexual behaviors and unhealthy dopamine stacking. So what we're gonna do in this here episode is, Number one, we are going to talk about all the slippery slope behaviors that lead to escalation and or relapse in porn use, addiction, and recovery. That's a big topic. There alone is a big topic. I better get going. Number two, what we're going to do is talk about the brain mechanisms underneath those things, namely tolerance building and tolerance building leading to escalation. And then number three is going to be your brain hack strategy for the day, which is going to be stopping or adiosing, as I like to say, unhealthy dopamine stacking and to begin to get healthy levels of dopamine from your life, which we may start with healthy dopamine stacking, and then use the purge and reboot strategy that I love to be able to get your brain to a place where it only wants healthy optimal levels of dopamine. It no longer needs big dopamine spikes from sexuality to make you feel good. I know what you're thinking, a tall order for one podcast, so let's dig in. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about the slippery slope behaviors that the hijacker will make you or encourage you to engage in so that you continue to escalate your hypersexuality or you get back into your old habits. So let me break them down for you. Um, I have them here in some different categories, but let's start out with some lower level behaviors and then we will go, we'll talk moving up into some higher level sexual acting out behaviors. Number one is food. Number two is drink, namely alcohol. Number three is marijuana or other drug use. And we could even put prescription, prescription medication in there as well. Then there is gaming, PGTV, which might have some sexuality in it, social media, which leads to sexual media, um, masturbation, and pornography, and then leading up to sexual acting out with other human beings, but in a completely objectificated, objectification, object, objectificated, that's not even a word, objectified, or using objectification. So I'm gonna break these down for you, so stay with me. So let us start with um, how the hijacker in your mind might use food. So let's first start with dopamine. What is it? Dopamine is the molecule of more. It motivates you back for more pleasure wherever you have conditioned your brain to go to feel good to get lots of dopamine. For many people, that's food, namely sugar. So sugar might lead you in the direction of kind of disinhibiting yourself because once you've had a bowl of ice cream or once you've had chocolate, it's like, okay, I'm already giving in to some pleasure. That pleasure might lead you to pouring a cocktail. So now you pour yourself a Jack and Coke, which you know I think are delicious, but they're definitely not good for you. They're laden with alcohol and with more sugar. And it's kind of, again, opening the floodgates like, oh, okay, that chocolate was great. And this Jack and Coke, which I like to call a Jack and Cake, this Jack and Cake is delicious and it's opening the gates even more. Then the hijacker gives you a brilliant idea. Maybe if I just smoked a little marijuana, that would make me feel good too. So you 
use some edibles, you engage in your drug of choice, you smoke some weed, now those pleasure gates are opening wide open. Then there might be going on social media and you convince yourself it's harmless, but it leads to sexual media where you're on social media, but you're really there for dopamine hits of looking at women who are scantily clad. And you're convincing yourself you're there checking in, but you're actually there for dopamine hits. So that's social media that leads to sexual media. Then enter gaming. Gaming's very dopamine producing, especially when you play with high levels of intensity for long amounts of time. So enter in gaming, there might be TV watching, there might be explicit TV watching, and then before you know it, you're sitting in front of porn. Porn may have escalated to websites that involve interacting with other human beings in an objectified way, not an objectificated way, if you know what I mean. So in this website, and I don't want to give the hijacker in your brain any ideas if you don't know about this, because I see the twinkle in people's eyes when I mention things that they don't know about, and that hijacker in their brain is going, hmm, later on, I'm going to find out about that thing that lady just said. So let's just leave it at there's higher level escalation behaviors that I don't want you to go to, but you can even objectify your partner. So it might be hookup culture, just having a hookup with someone. It might be dating apps, going on a dating app to just hook up with someone for more and more dopamine. This is what I want you to do in this podcast episode. And it's going to go to your brain hack. We're going to use it in your brain hack in just a few minutes. But think about all of those behaviors that I'm talking about. And I'm going to list them one more time for you in a second. But I want you to think about what order this disinhibition might be for you. And I talked to lots of people about their behaviors. And I know this is highly individualized. The food might be individualized. The drink might be individualized. The behaviors might go in different order. But what I also know is this is systematic. There's a system here that the hijacker in your brain is using to break down the walls to lead you to more higher levels of dopamine through sexuality or to lead you back if you're trying to quit. So right now, get out your journal, get out your leather journal or your pleather one from Amazon or Walmart. You can get them for like 10 bucks. They're nice. Get a nice journal that you write this stuff down in to let that hijacker know you mean business. You're staying in this journey. You're not giving up because it's getting a little challenging. And write these behaviors down for yourself. Food, especially sugary foods. Is there one that you go to late at night that starts to open the floodgates? Gaming, TV, alcohol, marijuana, other drugs, social media, which leads to sexual media, fantasy. I forgot to mention that one. I'm going to come back to that one. So let me, I guess I'll just talk about it right now. Fantasy, at a certain point, this can become internalized for you, where you might be using euphoric recall of past partners. You might be using euphoric recall of porn scenes that you've seen. You might have one act or scenario or one sexual behavior that hits your arousal template hard and you might think about that. It's internalized. You don't even need an external stimuli. You've internalized the stimuli and you keep going back to it for a dopamine hit. That's what fantasy is. And when you find yourself being baited by the hijacker, it's a call for mood regulation. It's to offset stress and boredom. If you just look at it for what it is and you know how to fill that need in a healthy way through our brain hack today, you won't be sucked down the slippery slope back into porn or into a higher level behavior. Um, for example, infidelity or cheating, that can be at the end of the slippery slope for so many people that are in a relationship. I talk to people all the time and they're like, I am blindsided by the fact that I cheated on my partner. I love her. I want to be with her. I have no idea how I got there. And I say, I have an idea. It's the hijacker in your brain escalating to that behavior for more dopamine than you've had yet. And it's just the beginning because if you let your brain get that amount of dopamine, it's going to want more, which is what we're going to cover next. But fantasy and all of these aspects have to do with it. 
masturbation. Masturbation has to do with this. So if you have a masturbation habit, I know you might think to yourself, it's harmless and it doesn't have to do with my partner. But this is what I wanna challenge you to think about here. Why are you masturbating? It's to offset stress or to fill quote unquote boredom, which is actually a lack of overstimulation. So this masturbation habit that you have is to keep your brain soothed and stimulated because it's using a dysfunctional brain pattern. That is what is at the core of the slippery slope and all of these behaviors, sexual acting out or objectification of other humans, checking people out, lusting, dating apps or other websites where there's human beings doing sexual acts for you. That's objectification. You're using those people not to connect with, but to satisfy your sexual needs for higher levels of dopamine. So we've talked about that. Now let's transition to number two. Number two is what are the brain mechanisms at the core of this slippery slope? So first is the call for mood regulation. It's your brain going, I'm in a pattern that's wired and tired. I don't want to feel wired and tired anymore. I want to feel calm. I want to feel focused. And when that happens, what your brain does is it tricks you into going to hypersexuality because that's how you've conditioned it over time to artificially slide you out of the pendulum effect brain strained brain and to slide you into artificial calm focus in the middle. So we know that our brain uses different speeds. When our brain is using too fast of speed, it feels like it wants to be soothed. When it's using too slow of a speed, it feels like it wants to be stimulated. These speeds are being used in your brain because of porn and hypersexuality. They're at the root of it. It is the core. It's the problem. So the problem is your brain is wired and tired and it wants to feel better. And you've taught it to go into the screen or to sex to shift it really fast into neutral. And when you do that, you feel better for a beat, just for a moment, or just for the time that you're in the screen, just for the time that you're acting out. Afterwards, it leaves you in a dopamine deficit state. And it goes back to Newton's law. Science, baby. I love some science. It goes back to Newton. Newton proved that for every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction, which means if your wired and tired brain leads you to do something that gives you that rush of dopamine and you feel great, how high you feel, how great you feel, you will have an equally low crash. Now, Newton's law also shows that if you keep doing that, you will build tolerance and that high high won't be able to go any higher. You'll have to do something new and even more dopamine producing to get you where you used to be able to get yourself before. And simultaneously, that crash will be even lower. So I call it the high highs lead to the low lows and even the higher highs lead to the lower lows and that high amount of pleasure leads to a significant amount of pain. That's what I call the pain pleasure paradox and it's processed in the same area of your brain and it is completely linked. So the key to getting out of all the pain in your life, whether that be anxiety, depression, relationship problems, lack of focus, not being able to get your job done, no longer engaging in your hobbies, erectile dysfunction. If you want to get out of that pain, let me tell you the solution. You have to stay away from those high levels of quote unquote pleasure that you are getting from hypersexuality. Where the problem lies, so does the solution. So the solution, my friend, is you got to stay away from the high highs and then you will no longer have the low lows. And I'm recording this podcast in November. So it's no porn November. We already started it. I'm calling it no shenanigans November. And this girl, guess what I've been doing? I have been taking all the shenanigans off of my plate. 
So I've said no to so many fun things that involve drinking and staying out late because I am not drinking, nor am I staying out late in November. And hopefully I'm going to keep the good habits rolling because if anybody's met me, I love science and I love to help people and I love to work, but I also love to hang out with my besties who tend to stay out late and drink. So I, and I'm always the first girl home, but since the beginning of time, I've been the first girl home, but even the first girl home gets home late when she's out with the besties. So I've had to tell the besties, I'm sorry, friends, I am hibernating. And they keep texting, thank God, because, you know, I want friends at the end of this. But I'm like, I'm sorry, friends, I'm a day girl. I'm not a night girl for November and through winter. I am getting myself as healthy as I possibly can. And I've been a champ. Uh, on Saturday night, Saturday night, yeah, Saturday night, there was some bubbles and, you know, some wine tasting bubble event. And I'm like, no friends can't do it. So instead I was working out and I was so psyched with myself. I'm like, right now I'm working out. And then I took a shower and I just chilled with my peeps. And I literally was in bed. I had to get up early on Sunday. Normally I would, not normally, but sometimes I would stay out late with my friends and my daughter at a horse show on Sunday. And I have to put a picture, it was so beautiful. I was there for 10 hours at the horse show, but I was there refreshed and I read my new book all day while I stayed present watching her and hanging out with her friends. Oh, such a, such a gift of being able to be present in that day and to feel amazing because I had a workout the evening before and I got to bed early and I got an amazing night's sleep. So that's the gift of making that choice. No shenanigans November. So I hope you're doing that also, recognizing all of these habits and especially these slippery slope habits. So for me, saying yes to going out, it's a slippery slope to having at least a drink, probably two, maybe three, which is too many. So staying, so saying yes to a Saturday night event leads to staying up late, slippery slope behavior, leads to drinking, leads to eating, leads to, you know, a bunch of other shenanigans that lead to really good stories. If you know that song, uh, I think it's AJR who sings it, where, where it goes, a hundred bad days make a hundred good stories. A hundred good stories make me interesting at parties. Yes, they do. But they don't achieve your goals if you're trying to get to the other side of something which we are. So you have to know which slippery slope behaviors you have to stay away from for the time. So this doesn't mean you have to stay away from social media forever. It means you need to clean that feed up and stay away from sexual media, but it might not be you have to stay away from social media. If you're single, it might not mean you have to stay away from dating apps forever, but it means you need to learn how to use them in a healthy way, which there's a video on my YouTube channel telling you just that. And if you're married, you don't need to be on a dating app. And we know from science, more married men are on dating apps than single men. And they're just there for the dopamine. So really becoming aware of your own behaviors and staying off the slippery slope so we can achieve your goals in November and for a lifetime. Okay, so going back to the brain mechanisms after that public service announcement that included a song, let's get back to the brain mechanisms. The brain mechanisms are tolerance building that leads to an equal and opposite reaction, high highs, low lows. And we know that this tolerance building actually started with the seeds of addiction that were planted back during adolescence or during that first exposure to porn. So what happens is porn is at the root of all of this for the most part, for most people. So for some people it's individualized, like I said, but for the most part, when you were young, you were exposed to some sexual stimuli that was very dopamine producing for you. It gave you a big dopamine spike. And in that first exposure, it changed the baseline dopamine level in your brain. And we know that happens within the first two exposures, your baseline level, your brain's performance pattern is changed to be linked or sexually conditioned to go back to sex for higher levels of dopamine. And we also know from the science, those higher levels of dopamine actually give you a bigger sensation than if you were never exposed to porn. It's called a higher reward sensitivity. 
So not only do you get bigger spikes, you feel them more. And this is what's so dangerous about porn and being exposed to sex at a very young age, sex at very high levels, long before your brain is supposed to process any of that. Your young brain couldn't process it, so it changed its levels and made it so that you had this higher reward sensitivity and this bigger dopamine spike. And if you water those seeds over a lifetime, it leads you in the direction of compulsive porn consumption and sexual acting out. Slippery slope, my friend, which that leads to tolerance building over all of that time. So let's go back to the topic of this, of this podcast is what causes the escalation of porn use or hypersexuality and what causes going back for relapse or slips. It is these brain mechanisms of wired and tired that need more dopamine. The more dopamine it gets, the more dopamine it needs. The more dopamine it gets, the lower the crash is in your real life. Dopamine drowning in the screen, dopamine deficit in your life, which leads to mental and physical health issues, anxiety, depression, erectile dysfunction, lack of focus and motivation. So let's move to your brain hack strategy number three for the day. The brain hack strategy is if you've been dopamine stacking on this slippery slope in an unhealthy way, let's switch that to a healthy way. Now, dopamine stacking is when you put together a whole bunch of activities that give you dopamine to get more and more dopamine. You stack them on top of each other. So back to my example, if you eat a chocolate bar, you pour yourself a cocktail, you smoke a little weed, you start to game, you check your phone, social media, and get some sexual media hits, and then you watch porn. That is six dopamine producing activities at higher and higher levels. Very unhealthy dopamine stacking. So let's flip the switch on that and not do any of that. And instead, let's go to dopamine stacking in a healthy way. So instead of me dopamine stacking in an unhealthy way on Saturday night, I worked out. That's one healthy way. I was cranking the tunes. That's two healthy ways. My peeps came out and I was outside. It was such a gorgeous night. I was in nature. Forget the peeps. Let's go to nature. I was outside. It was such a pretty night that it was totally clear. The North Carolina black sky with stars. I could see the stars. I was outside working out underneath them. Don't get me wrong. I was slightly thinking I might get picked off by a coyote, but I didn't. So you know, I had nature on my side. Nature is very dopamine producing, nowhere near porn, but very much so in a healthy way. My people were home and they kept coming out to chat with me. That's connection with people in the real world. Then I went in and I took a nice hot shower, number five, followed it with some cold, cold shower. That's number six, being able to feel warm. And then, you know, we know that cryotherapy is very effective for giving us bursts of dopamine. Then I got in bed early and chilled. I was chillaxing. I poured herbal tea with ashwagandha, which is an adaptogenic. That's seven and eight. I'm dopamine stacking in a really healthy way. So let's stop unhealthy dopamine stacking and start healthy dopamine stacking. Then ideally you need less and less dopamine. And then that way your brain feels great when you get all that healthy dopamine. And then you get a beautiful night's sleep. Number one way to have healthy levels of dopamine, get a beautiful night's sleep. That night I got a great night's sleep and I woke up feeling like a rock star. And I went out and spent the entire day in nature near horses. You want to feel calm and focused? Spend your day near horses. So let's think about those slippery slope behaviors and put up some boundaries around them, even if you have to say no to some things. Then in its place, get dopamine stacking in a healthy way. It's going to serve you in such a beautiful way. Figure out the things in your life that are very dopamine producing or just use the basics. Workout, movement, people that you enjoy being with, laughter. My family is so funny. They're such weirdos. I absolutely love being with them. My son blurted out this thing, which was so funny. He used a word that you wouldn't use in front of your mom if you were thinking about it. 
And I'm like, Declan, that's quite the strong stance you have on that. And you should see this kid turn red because he know he, he just dropped this bomb. Actually, my daughter said something funny yesterday too, where I gave her a double look like, you know, cause they're young adults now and we're, we're moving into this phase where they swear or they will say something that, you know, now we're adjusting to, you say that stuff in front of your mom. So then we laugh. My husband's a total weirdo at all times where he's hysterical. So he doesn't even mean to be, that's the funniest part of it. So laughter is such a beautiful thing. Being able to enjoy TV together. We watched the Beckham, uh, Netflix documentary, which was so insane how much crap that man took in his whole life. And he stayed in peace. You know, so we were watching it together, you know, so showers, cold showers, dopamine in a really healthy way, figure it out and stay out of dopamine stacking in a healthy way. Your brain will thank you and it will help you to avoid slips and relapses and it will help you understand escalation behavior. So let me double back to infidelity for one second, because infidelity to me is like way up there on the on the list of an escalation behavior. And it usually starts through years of porn use. We know there's the Coolidge effect. We know there's the butterfly effect. That's novelty and super normal stimuli. It just trains your brain to want lots of people or to engage with lots of people in a sexual way. And those lots of people have to be a 10, 11 plus type of person. So they have to be highly sexualized for your brain to get the dopamine from them. So the idea is like, you know, your brain is looking for novel high level stimuli, which we know from science means you become less satisfied with your partner. And that leads you to want to be with some of those novel, super normal stimuli in the world. That's an absolute kind of end of the trail of an escalation behavior in terms of hypersexuality. So if you're moving in that direction, I want you to know the hijacker in your brain is the dysfunctional brain pattern getting worse. I call him the hijacker because it personifies him for you. So you understand he isn't you, but what he is, is a dysfunctional brain pattern that needs to be optimized. When we optimize that, these behaviors go away. The shenanigans die down. So if you want help on this journey, please reach out to me, drtrishlee.com. You can talk with me personally on the contact page. You can sign up for a discovery session where we talk, but also you can see what services I offer there. The 90 day program under Porn Brain Rewire is a perfect start for most people. It's a digital program where I run monthly meetings, so we do get to interact and it's affordable. It's the triple A's. It's accessible, affordable, and anonymous. You can get started today without having to talk to me. But when you get into that program, you get a complimentary coaching call with Zach Carter, the lead coach, and you get to have monthly meetings with me. So please go over to my website and let's start putting this hypersexuality behind you so you can move forward living out the life of your dreams. I know it sounds cliche, but it's there for the taking once we optimize your brain. And I would absolutely love to be part of your journey. All right, until next time, control your brain or it'll control you.